Hey guys, what's going on? Andy Baker here of andybaker.com, an owner of Kingwood Strength and Conditioning, and I am in my home office today uh, doing a video. So it's been a while since I've uh, done a video, um, but I wanted to get something out based on a lot of the questions that I've been having in my online coaching group, uh, the Baker Barbell Club, um, about uh, push-ups and dips. Okay, so in a lot of the programs that I write, um, both in the gym and for my online coaching clients, um, I include a lot of dips. I'm a big fan of dips. Um, they're a great exercise for uh, adding mass to the upper body, to the triceps, to the chest, the shoulders. Um, and they fit really well in kind of the typical garage gym type program, which increasingly for a lot of my online clients, especially, they're working out in gyms where they don't have a lot of equipment. So it's often their garage gym, their basement gym, uh, that sort of thing. And so they might have a dip stand or some dip handles that they can attach to the cage. And so I like to really try to incorporate that as an, as an accessory movement that can be um, – that where the weight can be increased on it. And it's just – it's a very functional, uh, uh, useful addition to a barbell-based training program. So uh, the problem is, though, is that a lot of guys that are starting, are starting one of my programs can't do dips. They're just not strong enough to do it. So they're either – it's either just a lack of strength or it's an excess of body weight – um, and unfam unfamiliarity with the exercise, or even if they can do them, they're having to strain so much that you know they get a lot of pain in their shoulders and things like that. And and sometimes guys just shouldn't do dips. Um, you know, there are some people that uh, that get up there, and even if they're really strong on them and can do a lot of reps or do a lot of weight, they really just shouldn't do dips. It creates a lot of pain in their shoulders. So typically on stuff like that, if, if a guy's having a lot of trouble with an exercise, I just say you know don't do it, do something else. So. Um, so what do I do with, you know, with the guys that I'm programming dips for or, or recommending dips for that can't do them? So where do, where do we start if you, if you can't even get one or you can, you know, maybe only get just like two or three or something? So um, other than, you know, getting your, getting your body composition under control um, so that you can, you can actually do dips um, and you don't have, you know, too much excess body weight – and getting stronger on the on the main barbell exercises, but particularly the bench press is the is the big one that's going to help you uh, get more dips. Learning to get strong working with your own body weight can be helpful. So I really like to include push ups in there as the as a supplemental movement for the dips. So if a guy can't do dips and he wants to learn how to do dips, I'll have him one try to get stronger on the bench, but I will also have him start doing push ups so that he increasingly gets more competent working with his own body weight. So um, and a lot of people will be um, surprised that even even when they are are decent bench pressers uh, if they're not used to doing some of the body weight stuff is is how bad they are push-ups now typically they'll get pretty strong pretty fast because a lot of it is just there's a little short learning curve and maybe there's an endurance adaptation uh, from switching over from you know exclusively bench pressing with low reps to doing like high rep sets of push-ups um but typically it's it's a it's a it's a pretty fast transition but right at the beginning uh there may be some trouble so um so it, what I did here with this video was I wanted to show you guys uh, some ways in which I have people uh, do push-ups at my gym, okay? And there's going to be really kind of three, uh, three basic scenarios here. One is, the, is kind of the, the, just the basic push-up uh, that I have people do. One is going to be a progression from that, so what we're going to call a, a deficit push-up. Um, and then the other one will be a regression from that, which will be if say you if you're if you're if you lack the strength or your body composition is too poor um, to be able to do regular push-ups off of the floor, um, how do we make a push-up easier uh, so that you can you can actually do the push-up and then from there your goal is not to is not to transition immediately to dips it's to actually be able to just do regular push-ups off of the floor um, and so I've got a, a trick using that using the power cage okay so uh, if you've got a rack with adjustable pin settings. And you've got a barbell, then you can do this. Um, and so I'll show you the videos. But basically, um, you know, the the, the main push-up that I do, just the kind of the regular push-up that I do with people, um, and, and I'll be very honest, I, I completely stole this and ripped this off from Joe DeFranco like 10 or 15 years ago. So when I first started following some of his stuff was I saw how he was having his guys do his push-ups when he was training a lot of guys for the um, for the NFL Combine and the, and the 225 bench test. Uh, was he had a lot of guys doing a lot of high rep push-ups in order to build that endurance adaptation to be better at the 225 bench test. He had guys doing uh, push-ups this way. So the, basically the version of that, and you'll see it in the video here in a minute, is we're going to be laying the barbell 
across the very bottom of the cage. So not necessarily on the bottom pin setting, but the actual bottom rails of the cage. Now it'll vary, the setup will vary a little bit based on how your cage um, is built. But with mine, it gives a, a two or three inches off of the floor where the barbell is set. And so then we're going to basically do the, the push-ups like a like an upside down bench press. So you're going to be holding onto the bar and lowering your chest down to the bar and pushing back up. Often elevate the feet a little bit just so that everything's nice and even. And I'll show that on the video as well. Um, and then you're lowering down to the bar. And what it does, it makes for, for a lot of guys, it just makes for a little bit longer range of motion than it does if you're doing it on the floor. It makes it more like a bench press. It's a little bit easier on the wrist sometimes than having your hands totally flat. If you're a bigger guy, a heavier guy, and you're going to be doing a lot of reps, it can it can bother the wrist a little bit uh, to have your hand cranked back like that doing a lot of push-ups. Um, but for and for a lot of a lot of my clients, what they'll find is if they're doing them just off of the floor, uh, you know, if they've got any kind of belly or gut at all, or there's a bigger guy, they're actually not getting a whole lot of range of motion there. And when they're lowering down, it's like their gut and their belly is hitting the floor before their chest is. So they're not getting a real full range of motion across the delts and the pecs. And what they find is when they switch to this version, it actually gets a little bit harder because they're getting a better range of motion. Um, so that's kind of, we're going to show you the basic one, and then I'm going to show you a deficit push-up. The deficit push-up, the way that I do it in my gym is I use, a, I have a four-inch cambered bar, a specialty bar that I lay in the bottom of the rack. And so we lower down into that, and that creates a deeper range of motion, a deeper stretch. And often when I can get people doing the good deficit push-ups, um, then they're very, very close to being able to pull off their first uh, sets of dips. So if you can get 10, 15, 20 good deficit push-ups, depending on your body weight, at that point, you're probably going to be ready to, to go from there. You'll probably be able to crank out at least a couple dips. And then once you can build up, once you get those first couple of dips in, it's it's easier to, to build your numbers up. The hardest dips to do are the ones that go from zero to one. That's the hardest transition to make. Once you can get one or two full clean ones, it's pretty easy um, from there to start building your reps up. So um, so I'll show you the deficit push-ups and then... Um, uh, you can also, you can mimic the deficit push-up if you don't have a 4-inch camber bar, because I know a lot of gyms, especially your home gyms, you don't have a 4-inch camber bar. You can mimic that by stacking uh, things up, whether it's wood or bumper plates or something like that, where elevate your hand and give you a little bit increased range of motion. Um, and then the last thing that I'll show you is the is the regression from the, from the uh, basic push-up, which is... Um, an elevated push-up so we're gonna instead of doing the knees thing which really never works you know get on your knees and do partial push-ups I never really see people transition um, to, to good push-ups from from doing that the, the range of motion gets pretty restricted pretty fast so uh, what we'll I'll show you how to do is a, a version where we're actually elevating the bar up in the power rack and doing them and then and then using the lower depth workout to work out as kind of a linear progression uh, down towards the floor so um, anyways, guys, uh, I appreciate it, and we're going to cut over to the, uh, the training footage now. All right, thanks a lot. All right, so there you can see the 4-inch uh, cambered bar set up in the bottom of the rack, and so this is, uh, this is how we do the uh, deficit push-ups at my gym, and I use this little aerobic step here just to kind of elevate the feet a little bit and uh, flatten, out, flatten out the body, which gives you a better range of motion and makes it a little bit harder. So. Uh, you're going to want to lower all the way down in there. There's no sense in having the deficit if you're not uh, going down deep um, into the very bottom. So I'll go down and hit the lower part of the chest. Um, right, Same place you would kind of hit a, hit a bench press, kind of at the, the lower portion of the chest, the tip of the breastbone there, and then just get a full stretch uh, with these. And you want to build up to where you're doing sets of 10, 15, 20 reps on here. And then uh, once you get to that point, you're going to be pretty close to being able to get your first sets of dips. So um, this is kind of the first step here is uh, getting good at these deficit push-ups and then you'll be good uh, for your dips. Here's just the regular push-up. So now we've transitioned over to a, uh, a regular bar, just a straight bar at the bottom of the cage. Um, still using a little bit of elevation there on the feet. Um, and this is just kind of the standard way that we do push-ups here at the gym. And it just uh, it kind of mimics the bench press and it gives you a fuller range of motion. Uh, and you'll notice the difference uh, when you do these that you've got plenty of clearance and uh, they really feel good compared to the version done on the floor. Here's a version done with a close grip. So you can move your hands in pretty much almost identically mimics a close grip bench press. Still going to hit the lower portion of the chest, but this just puts a lot more emphasis on the triceps. So it's a great way to finish off like a tricep workout or a, uh, throw these in at the end of a bench workout. 
uh, for a little added focus on some get some volume in on the triceps there. Here is the uh, kind of the regression. This is uh, starting at about waist height on the bar. Uh, so if you're you know if you're really overweight or you're really bad at push-ups, just not very strong, and you want to get better at them, you can start somewhere like this. And then what you'll see is just over time you can lower the barbell down um, until you're all the way at the floor. So and that will that will kind of vary depending on your pinhole setting on your rack. I've got very fine pinhole settings, so I'll go down two or three a workout for a client. Um, if you've got big hole spacing, you just go down one you know one hole space per workout or every couple of workouts until you go uh, all the way down at the floor. So here's like kind of mid thigh height. This might be after a couple of weeks of doing these. Um, and then there's about knee height. And so these are just kind of examples of seeing how, uh, if you're a coach or a trainer or just training yourself of, of how you might implement this technique uh, in order to get yourself down on the floor to being able to do real pushups. Here's a couple of examples of just some mistakes that I, I, I see very often in the gym with my clients. Um, and the first one, this usually happens when people get tired and this is just shoving the ass back first. Um, you'll find that if you're, if you're doing this, you can pretty much go all day on the push-ups because it takes all the stress off of the chest and shoulders and arms. So uh, make sure that you're not leading back with the butt like that. You wanna keep um, everything very rigid. You wanna have no bending at the hips, no bending at the trunk. You're just going straight down and straight up. Here's another mistake, which is reaching forward with the chest. So if you notice, I'm not pivoting much on the balls of my feet. I'm just reaching for the bar with my chest. There's correct right there. This is the way you want to do them. Pivot on the balls of the feet. This is incorrect, reaching forward with the chest. So anyways, guys, uh, this was a little quick tutorial on push-ups. And um, make sure you're doing your push-ups if you want to be able to get your dips in. And uh, as always, guys, I appreciate your time, and thank you for watching. I'll catch up with you later. Thanks a lot.